Now if you want to describe a few more mapping unique features that, that I employ, one of them is a derived volumetric efficiency table. Well, this is displayed in microseconds and it's essentially an exact VE curve inside a specific engine. You'll see an interaction between the base injection time. This here is just a nominal representation. It has no fueling effects inside the engine, but it's a good visual check as to how this actual table is derived. And our base fuel target that we want to implement inside the engine. So something that's quite important that a lot of people miss here is the effect of the fuel multi CLL1. Essentially when you're doing this or as I'm applying it in this demonstration to get correct fuel final values down here you have to turn off the proportional and the integral terms so there is no wind up in this fuel multi seal or one otherwise it'll be incorrect so one way you can get around that is do your own math channel representing a percentage of error between the desired fuel that you want to target in the engine and what the actual is for the purpose of this demonstration we'll just leave it as actually doing 0.7 lamb or roughly 42.9% excess fuel saves me twiddling a few extra knobs. But what we'll do is we'll run the simulated engine up through the RPM range and also the load range as well and you can see how it tracks in the VE shaping now. Keep in mind all of this is off an actual engine and these are 100% correct with very small deviations. We'll run it through and you can get an idea. We've got a few warning lights here which are much more handier than trying to interpret numbers. So the basic idea is if it's flashing red it'll raise your attention to what's going on. So for the purpose of this the relative fuel pressure is going to be pegged high. Can't turn too many things in one go but we'll save that. All that is is telling you that it's a high pressure warning. You can see it off the end down here. But keep an eye on the VE curve the fuel curve and the injectors. So what we have on this engine is a primary injector and a secondary injector and they get split depending on the load demand on the engine based on RPM and the manifold pressure. You'll see all that in action. So we'll increase the RPM here. So we've gone from an idle. We'll go to about mid-range RPM 5000. We'll go full throttle and we'll increase our manifold pressure to roughly 15 odd psi 2000 millibar sea level now we can see how our ve's jumped up to 140 percent a lot of people won't believe it but they're not engineers so don't listen to them but that's an actual figure that happens inside the engine this curve is uh, essentially a reflection of the brake specific fuel consumption and also the torque demand inside the engine for what it's produced and we map that quite accurately so it's quite realistic. Keep increasing the RPM, go to about seven and a half. We'll leave it at about eight and a half or then we'll slowly increase that manifold pressure and you'll see uh, the basic effect here is these numbers are shaping trending downwards. We'll go to about 3000 millibar, roughly 29 odd psi, that's sea level gauge boost pressure. And we see our fuel pressure has gone back to a normal sort of range near our one target. If you want to, you can increase this based on if you have a mechanical fuel pump where the rate artificially rises due to overpowering a one-to-one -one rig. Or if you've got a rising rate fuel pressure regulator, you can simulate all of that. Right. Let's bring the RPM back down. Bring the manifold pressure back down. And 
that's roughly where it idles at. Now hopefully that was of some use. You see here we've got a high fuel pressure trip because it's off the end of our scale. We'll just lower the fuel pressure back down to a more sensible level. There you go.